Hey, Trainiacs, Mel the Train Shooter, back in the studio and back with the first of our Let's Makes. Now, every terrain piece starts on a good foundation. And typically, yeah, my favourite is the old 6mm MDF. But there's problems with this. It, require, it really requires power tools to work with. It's pretty noxious and you have to buy big sheets of it to, to make any real savings in the economy of scale. So what I want to do is take you through some cheaper and easier alternatives. Yeah to get you making some terrain at home without all the hassle that comes with the MDF. So let's head over to the bench and crack on, eh? So let's look at the materials we're going to be using. Now, as I said, yeah, MDF is typically my sort of go-to material, but it's a lot of work, it needs power tools, you know, it's a bit noxious, you know, the dust isn't good for you. So, cheap and simple stuff, yeah, that you can get at home, work at home without power tools. Let's start off with the most obvious. Yeah, cardboard, corrugated cardboard. <laughs> yeah, now you may think, Mel's lost his mind here. Yeah, that's no good for basing. Look, it wobbles, it bends. Yeah, useless. Yes, it is. But with a little modification, what you can do, yeah, is if you cut two pieces and you glue them, so do you see the corrugated bit? Yeah, those lines, the wavy lines, yeah. If you switch them round, so you have one piece where the lines go one way, yeah, because this bends really well this way, but it doesn't bend the other way because of those lines. If you put one piece that way and then one piece on top of it like that way, you end up with this. Now this has been glued with a little bit of PVA and left overnight, yeah. Brilliant base, absolutely brilliant. Now we need to do a little bit of work and we'll be doing a little bit of work on a few of them. And by work, I mean giving them a bit of a texture with ready-to-use filler. Dial is my sort of preferred brand. This is from B&Q in the UK. But any sort of filler, spackle, yeah, will do. So, we've got corrugated cardboard. Now, let's say, you know, it's way too cheap for me, Mel. I need something more professional. I'm not using cardboard on my terrain. Well, don't, don't diss it. Watch. Have a play. Yeah. Okay, well, let's step it up. Yeah. Oh, cake bases. You know wedding cakes and stuff like that? Well, they come on cake bases, which are these. Yeah, now this is about a couple of quid. Yeah, but you can get it from your local supermarket. You don't have to buy big sheets of it. And essentially, it is a cheap and simple form of MDF boards. Yeah, it's fibre board. Yeah, if we just rip that off there, you'll be able to see. See? Yeah, so what we'll be doing is we'll be peeling this down and cutting this out. Now, when you cut it, you can use tools like, yeah, a Stanley knife or an Exacto in the US. But for this, yeah, to be truthful, if you can get your hands on a coping saw, much better, much, much better. So we're going to be playing with that one. Okay. Next up, yeah, we have foam board. Now this is five mil black foam board. Okay. Yeah, standard foam board. The stuff we make our, what you call it, uh, uh, buildings out there, our room buildings. Now, it's not bad as a basing material. It doesn't do really well on large flat bases, but as long as it's got something built up on top of it, it works quite well. But, you know, much like the, much like this one, where we're going to reinforce it with filler, we're going to do the same with this one. Okay, and then finally, yeah, we've got, yeah, uh, EPVC, yeah, extended, expanded plus polyvinyl, I don't know, yeah. We've done a Terrain Lab video on it, it's in the Terrain Labs, but it's really good stuff. It's dirt cheap, it does take a little bit of cutting with a blade, yeah, but you can work it. So what I'm going to do is, let's start off, and shall we start off with a cardboard? Yeah, seems the best place to go, isn't it? So, cardboard, dead simple. Yeah, all we're going to do, in fact, I don't even have to draw it out because I can think about it. I'm going to use a blade, and first off, I'm just going to cut out a circle. So there we have it. Nice and easy. Yeah, and you can see nice and clearly how the striations go in different ways. Yeah, and why it gets that nice sturdiness. Now, obviously that's a bit chunky in it, we need to bevel it down. So once again, back with the blade. Yeah, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in, yeah, and just cut the edge off. It's 
So there we are, all done. If I bring it up, yeah, you can see the contours on it. It's a bit rough and ready, but it's okay because these are cheap and easy bases. Now the next job we need to do is we need to sort of sturdy this up and get a texture on it. And as I said before, yeah, filler for that one. So, dead simple. You'll need a little bit of water for this as well. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my filler. And assuming it doesn't squeeze out the top like it always does. Come on. Put a bit on. Yeah. A little wet your fingers a little. Yeah, and all you're looking at doing is forcing this filler into all of those gaps. Yeah. And what this will do, yeah, is when it dries, yeah, it because it's forced in, it will set the gaps and it will make it even more rigid. So I need to crack on with this. Squeeze a bit more elbows. Wait, see, I told you to come out of the top. Always does. That's how we roll on this channel, isn't it? Right, so all I'm going to do is just carry on putting these in. Yeah, and we'll come back once I've got that done, yeah? I'll see you in a minute. So there we have it. Yeah, if I bring that up nice and close. You can see I've given the, the top a, a very thin coat and I just smudged it round. Yeah, and we've really pushed it into all those edges and filled those gaps. Now the last thing to do is, because with these sort of bases you can't really glue down a grit coating with PVA, it's just too much warping. We need to use the filler as a texture. So, I'm gonna wet my fingers and just make sure they're damp. Yeah, I'm gonna, a little bit more than that. Yeah, you don't wanna soak it with water. Yeah, but you just want to get it wet so it's tacky. And then once it's tacky, what you can do is you can start coming in with your hand yeah, and stippling it. So if I bring that up, see the stippling pattern? Yeah, so dead simple. Smooth it out, stipple it, and that will give you your texture that you're looking to work with. And there we go, all done. Right, now obviously if I was building something, I would have built something on this before I started putting the filler on, but I'm just showing you how to do the bases. So there you have it guys, yeah, that is the basic technique, that is ready for painting, well it will be once it's dried, okay, and now what we need to do is we need to move on to, yeah, the other materials. So I'll put this to one side, and we'll get the other materials and I'll take you through those. Okay, next up we've got the foam board. Now once again, it is exactly the same process. Cut it, shape it, bevel it, apply filler. So. So, got a rough shape, now beveling. There we have it, nice and beveled. Yeah, I've done a wide bevel on this because I want the, the filler to be able to soak in. Much like the uh, cardboard, we're gonna be using the filler basically to firm it up. So I'm just gonna rub the filler specifically in to those holes. Yeah, and that's important because that's what will give it its rigidity. Yeah, foam board's okay, but normally it warps as a basing material, so you need to firm it up and we're using filler to do that. So I'll crack on and then I'll stipple it just the same as we did the cardboard. And there you have it, yeah? As you can see, all coated, all stippled, took a couple of minutes. Now, very much like the cardboard, if I was building something, I would have built this on it before I put the stippling on, yeah? But I'm not, this is just to show you the basis and the texture. So there you are, yeah? Right, let's move on to the cake board, eh? Right, cake board, uh, fibre board, dirt cheap, available from most supermarkets, really good base material, but takes a little bit of work and is a little bit toxic and needs a, you know, when I say specialist tools, yeah, you can cut it with a steak knife and I have, yeah, but something like a coping saw, yeah, works really well. If you've got power tools, then even better. Now the important thing with cake board is what you need to do is you need to remove the bulk of this silver stuff. Okay, which it's a good job for kids to be perfectly honest. Ah. Don't worry about getting all the paper off it. You don't need to. You just need to get the majority of the silver and what little bits you can get off it. Yeah, so I'm going to get that done now and I'll come back in a second. 
So all peeled off, yeah, and we're ready to start cutting. Now, like I said, you can use a coping saw, you can use a sharp blade. You know, it's not that tough, it just takes a few cuts. And now you can see why the coping saw is better. Let me see how it's coming off. There you are. But I'm probably going to do this with a coping saw. So as you can see, yeah, it is doable with a sharp blade. I could keep going, but it's just, you don't want to sit here watching me cut for half an hour. I don't know how long it'd take me to get through that. But I'm going to crack on with a coping saw and I'll come back once we've shaped it out, yeah? So there we have it. Yeah, all cut out. Took less than a minute with a coping saw. Yeah, next job, Beverly. Yeah, no different than the others. Just coming along and cutting slivers off. Yeah, remember this does get dusty, so you know you go, might want to wear a mask, do it in a well ventilated area, because much like MDF, you don't want to get this stuff in you. Okay, so as you can see, it bevels really easy. I'm going to bevel this down, yeah, and then it'll just be a matter of putting the filler on like before. So I'll crack on. So there we are, all done. Yeah, beveled, coated with a bit of filler and it's looking good. Right, we'll put this to dry with the other ones and we'll look at our final material, our PVC. So, expanded PVC. Yeah, a relatively new basing material for us guys. Yeah, but really, really good. Uh, almost as hard as MDF. Yeah, you can work it with a blade. It takes a few cuts. So, just to give you an example, yeah. See, <laughs> couple of cuts. There we go. Yeah, and as you can see, it does cut. And it's sort of expanded plastic. Now, same techniques as before. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it out, I'm gonna bevel it, and then I'm gonna coat it with some filler. Yeah, just like our other pieces, and then we'll leave those to dry, yeah? So I'm gonna crack on, and I'll come back to you once I've got it all cut out. Yeah, because it's exactly the same technique, guys. You know what I mean? Just a different material. There you go. So, there you have it on that one. Yeah, dead easy. Probably my favourite material so far, to be perfectly honest. EP EPVC, yeah. All stippled up, and all we've got to do now is leave that with the rest of them to dry, and then it's base coating and dry brushing time. Yeah, so we'll come back when they're all dry, guys. So, guys, they're all dry and they're good to go. So, starting with the start. Yeah, our uh, double layer, what you call it, cardboard. Yeah, really firm, it's got our texture on. Yeah, easy, works for a base, great, absolutely great. Next one, the thinner foam board. Remember guys, with the foam board, you really do need to have something on it if you, if you want to stop it from warping, but it works, there you go. See, look at the detail, it's all stippled, beveled. Yeah, you can build things on that, and as you can see, no warping, yeah. Over to this side, yeah, and this is our cake base. Yeah, really, really good results. Really good, there you are. And then finally, my favorite of the bunch, and uh, you know, my new basing material, once I've got rid of all my MDF, is the EPVC. Yeah, and as you can see, absolutely fine. Now all that remains, yeah, is to, so you can see the proper effect of them, is we need to give them a blaster with a brown, and then a quick dry brush with a light cream. So there you have it guys, all done. Yeah, the paint base coated and dry brushed. It's a rough one. Yeah, but as you can see, starting off with the uh, cardboard, it's a nice sturdy base. It hasn't warped, you can build on that. Yeah, and you can play it on it. Yeah, moving on, we've got the cake base, exactly the same, good texture. Yeah, <laughs> nice dry brushing, but good texture. Yeah, on top of that, we've got the foam board. Yeah, could have beveled it a little bit more. I think you can see that line, but you see the effect. Yeah, and you can see how that is a dirt, cheap, easy base. And then finally, my very favorite. Yeah, our EPVC. Yeah, this, is, this stuff is just the dogs. I really love this stuff, yeah? Well, there you go. Yeah, dead simple. So there you have it. 
Yeah, you don't have to be stuck with needing power tools to work your MDF bases. Yeah, there are lots of other cheap and easy alternatives and I've taken you through them. Yeah, we've used cardboard, we've used cake base, we've used foam board, we've used EPVC and if you have to cheap source, check out printers. They always have tons of this as scrap so you could probably get your entire set for now or a couple of quid, you know what I mean? So, but there you have it. And as I said, you know, all good terrain starts with a good foundation. So here's four good foundations for you if you can't do the MDF thing because of the power tools or because of the mess. Yeah. So as always, guys, yeah, if you've got any questions, any comments, throw them in the comments. Yeah, if you like it, like it. If you know someone this will be useful for, please share it to them. And then above all, you know, if you like these sort of videos, if you find them useful, or if you just want to support me and my little terrain jolly helping the community, yeah? Remember, there's always Patreon. And, you know, if you're not up for Patreon, yeah, there's always the one-off PayPal. Details are in the description, guys. Now, we've got the bases made. Next thing to do is get stuck in. Let's start making some Let's Make Terrain. So, I'll see you shortly on the next Let's Make video. See you soon, guys.